You know, I just want to make a comment before we start, Barbara. First, I'd like to congratulate Bob for going on the air with CNN and defending his position. Second, I'd like to congratulate Bob for his generosity to step up and try to help people from another country. And lastly, I want to ask you, the viewers, to go to www.bobparsons.me and add your support. Hi, Barbara. How are you? Hi, James. I'm doing well. And I completely agree with you. I think Bob Parsons did a good thing. He did a good thing for the elephant populations in Zimbabwe. He did a good thing for the land of Zimbabwe. And he did a good thing for the people of Zimbabwe all the way around. And here at the Hunting Report, we congratulate him on doing that. Uh, this kind of thing is something that we understand and our subscribers understand the need for it. Uh, and it's time that the rest of the world start to understand the need for it as well. Now, you've, you've done a little research on this, and I think you probably know more about what's taking place over there than, the, than probably 90% of the people here in this country. So could you kind of explain a little bit about uh, that situation? Well, I, I think, first of all, we need to understand that this whole uh, controversy is a classic example of people allowing themselves to be carried away by their feelings and refusing to take the path of reason even when it has been laid out before them. If they looked at this rationally and looked at the facts, they would understand, first of all, that elephant populations in many parts of Africa are not endangered. They are not even threatened. Uh, we need to stop looking at animal populations as a huge monolith. This is not the case. There are pockets in Africa where elephants are having trouble. CAR comes to mind, uh, Central African Republic, where Sudanese poachers are still coming over the border and chasing those animals with AK-47s. And the government of CAR has proven completely incapable of stopping us. Those elephants are in trouble. Elephants in Zimbabwe? No. Their populations are booming, so much so that they are destroying destroying tracts of their habitat. They're turning parts of Hwangi Park, Park into desert. They're turning all kinds of, of areas into desert because they're overfeeding. And what you need to understand is, it's not just the elephants that are eating themselves out of house and home, but when they destroy their own habitat, they've destroyed it for every other species that depends on that habitat. So you need to understand elephant populations in most places are booming. They are not in trouble. And they're causing problems that we need to step in and fix. The, the second thing is there's a tremendous amount of pressure on land use all around the world. And this is true in Africa as well as everywhere else. Wildlife like elephant need enormous tracts of, of territory in which to range freely. In Africa, this puts elephants in uh, the path of conflict with human beings, with agriculture, and with livestock. Uh, the growing amount of land conversion to livestock is one of the biggest threats that elephants and other game animals and, and wildlife in Africa is facing today. You might think about it kind of like the American buffalo, the American bison. What happened when people started moving out west and carving pieces of land up with fences? What happened to the movement of those buffalo? What happened when the railroad cut through the American West? This is the kind of, of, of situation that we're seeing in Africa. And people need to stop thinking the way that they have been traditionally about animal uh, populations and animal movements. It's a lot more compli co uh, complicated than that. Um, this is not an animal that you can transplant. This is not an animal that you can give contraceptives to. If it has not worked with white-tailed deer, what makes anyone in their, in their wildest dreams imagine that it will work with elephants that weigh tons? How are you going to, to, to do this with groups of, of female elephants? It's hard enough to get within shot of one, uh, much less to administer contraceptives to hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of elephants. Yeah, I, I guess that's been tried over there, and I think it has maybe on a very limited basis in a park area where they can control it. You know, maybe there has been some uh, 
positive results from that. But in the wild, I think that's probably an impossible idea. The other thing, Barbara, is, you know, they, they refer to putting up an electric fence and spending your money that way rather than uh, harvesting the elephant. Uh, <laughs> I guess yeah, I don't have to. Let me get this straight. <laughs> the people who are, are planting these crops, who live in houses that have no electricity, and, and they have no money to pay for electricity. They're supposed to put up fences with electricity running through them. First of all, where, where's the money going to come from? And how are you going to explain to somebody who has nothing that you're going to put all these tons of dollars into building fences rather than into helping lift them out of pro poverty? Yeah, as a matter of fact, uh, and I have, I have some information here uh, that, that actually you sent me and it is the African Elephant Status Report. And uh, Department of National Parks and Wildlife Management there uh, said that they have to raise their own money to support that department. So, I mean, where's the money gonna come from and where are you gonna bring the electricity in? It's not like you can set a car battery out there and then <laughs> and that's not going to do it because how are you going to recharge the car battery and blah, blah, blah. Uh, you know, if the car battery is even strong enough, and I don't think it would be to stop elephant. I think you need serious electricity involved. Now, the other thing I did read in some of the uh, information that we received was, was, another, was another solution, something about a, uh, uh, a string with chili on it. Uh, did you read that? <laughs> <What>? <laughs> I did see that, and I'm sorry, uh, that's La La Land thinking. <laughs> Elephants have been known to bulldoze their way through buildings in Africa to get to stored uh, a grain. What makes you think that a, a piece of string with some chili on it is going to deter an, an animal that big with that much strength and that much determination when they're hungry? This is this is la la land thinking. I, right. I'm I'm sorry, but it it's just completely naive. Right. I, I mean, I I live in an area where I do have electricity, and I tried that electronic fence thing with the dogs, and uh, the dogs finally learned that you know if they just push through it, they're fine. So. <laughs> Hey, Barbara, listen, there's a couple of books, however, that we do want people to read, and I'm going to put those up here, uh, and that they, they can obtain by going to your website, I think at least one of them, and that's where you're going to get your real good information from. Thank you, Barbara. We'll see you again next week. Thank you, James. It's a pleasure as usual.